everybody, it's Gil here. Welcome back to another Tuesday grilling video. And I'm sorry, I actually missed last Tuesday. I had a, a few videos kind of in the hopper and I used them up and kind of forgot and <laughs> didn't record one last weekend. But this week, the weather is beautiful down in Southwest Florida again, and it's time to go ahead and do something a little different. We're gonna go ahead and do an African inspired peanut chicken stew. I know that sounds really odd, Hopefully the thumbnail caught your attention. It is delicious. So let me show you how we go about making this. And we're gonna do it, of course, on the barbecue, right? Why else would we not cook it outside? So let's go ahead and get this started. So let's talk about the ingredients we need for this. Again, it's a chicken is the protein we're gonna use. So we're gonna go ahead and use some boneless, skinless chicken thighs and some breasts. You want about two to three pounds of them. Now we're actually gonna be doing the boneless, skinless. Traditionally, you do these with the bone in them and you do them with the skin on them. You want them to get nice and crispy. We are gonna caramelize them even without the skin in this pot when we get started. The other ingredients you'll need, you're gonna need about a cup of peanut butter. You're gonna need onions, uh, tomatoes, garlic, ginger, some general household seasonings. We'll go into those when we start adding them, as well as some chicken stock and sweet potatoes. So that's what we need for this thing. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna brown the pieces of chicken. We wanna get that caramelization going in the pan. I'm actually using a, a this is a, an aluminum pan. I would certainly encourage a cast iron um, sort of Dutch oven with a lid. Uh, this will work for us now. My wife's using the, uh, the cast iron Dutch oven. So I'm gonna make do with the aluminum one, but this is a good pot. I've used this for stews before. Now you can put this pot right on your actual grill, on a burner, you could also do it in the house but you definitely want to do it on a pot. I thought about actually doing the chicken on the grill to get the caramelized flavor there. But the other thing I really want to do as well is I want to get the caramelization and some of those brown bits down on the bottom of the pan, because as we add our stock and saute our onions, we're going to get all of that good flavor off of the pan as well. So I just added about two to three tablespoons of oil. Let that get really good and hot. And then we're going to place our chicken right inside of that. It's now time to go ahead and salt our chicken. Um, Make sure you want, to, you want to salt both sides of it. You're looking for some good flavor here. So I'm going to salt the top of it in the pan here. We're just going to go ahead and lay these right down into the oil. Now we're going to season this side of them as well. Now all we're trying to do is get these things caramelized and brown on one side. We're not trying to cook them through. They're going to cook for a long period of time in the stew itself. So let me show you what they look like. That's exactly what we want is where they're stuck on there a little bit like that. That's that caramelization that's happening. Now, if you're doing yours with the skin on, you will see this even a little bit more caramelized for sure. I'm gonna go ahead and pull these off. And you just wanna set these aside for a little bit. Again, it's okay that they're not cooked all the way through. That's not the purpose of this. All right, we now have these, listen, listen to that, that sounds awesome. Got some nice caramelization down on the pan and on the chicken. And now we're just gonna go ahead and saute in one large sweet onion. And we just wanna keep moving that around, let that onion pick up all of that caramelized pieces of chicken on there. Make it nice and good flavor. Just use a wooden spatula or metal one if you're not using a non-fix and uh, just scrape that along the bottom. Then we wanna just scrape all that nice brownness off of there from the chicken. Let that get right into these onions as they cook. All right, now that these are looking good and translucent, about three to five minutes or so, we are now gonna go ahead and add in six to eight cloves of garlic, nice and minced up, and either use fresh ginger, about a two to three, a size of your thumb of a shredded ginger, or you can use ginger paste. I'm using the uh, minced garlic, six to eight cloves, and about two tablespoons of ginger paste, just because it's easier. We only want to saute this for about a minute, otherwise we will burn that up. You just want to keep that moving with that ginger and garlic in there, but man, does it smell good. Two to three cups of um, cubed up sweet potato. I cut these up in similar size because I want them to all cook through at about the same pace. So I'm just going to stir these real good, get them coated with that oil. 
And we're gonna end up adding stock to this, but boy, I sure like to saute these a little bit just to get a little bit of that caramelization, even on the outside of the sweet potato. Just building some layers. Now I'm gonna add this a little bit slowly. Because I sauteed those sweet potatoes on here, there's a lot of caramelization down on the bottom of this. I wanna scrape it a little bit and deglaze the pan. Get all that flavor up off of there. All right, so we're just gonna go ahead and add in this quart. So now you wanna go ahead and add seasoning to this. We're gonna use some ground coriander and a little bit of cayenne, about a tablespoon of each though. We're going a little light on the cayenne just cause we don't like a lot of that real spicy stuff there. And then remember, it is a peanut soup. So you can take peanuts and grind them up in a food processor. You can use just store-bought, you know, Jif brand or whatever the heck it is. Um, we're using some organic uh, peanut butter that's just nothing but peanuts, that's it. So we're just gonna go ahead and put this in. This is pretty thick, so as the stock heats up, this will help melt down that peanut butter and break it up a little bit. I'm gonna cover this up, let it go for a little while before we put the chicken back in. Now the last thing we're gonna do is add in a one can of crushed tomatoes or one large chopped up and diced tomato. You can see I've got that peanut butter mixed in there pretty well now. Starting to take on the color that we sort of expect here. Now what we're gonna do is we're just gonna add our chicken pieces right back in here and we're gonna cover this up and we're gonna let it cook for about 90 minutes. We'll come back and check it after an hour or so. And I'm gonna put these thick pieces in the middle here. Put the thinner thighs around the side. Over here, yeah, right here. Hey, do me a favor. If you like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. And if you wanna see more like it, subscribe to the channel and click on that little bell notification so you get notified of new videos. Thanks. We're gonna cover this up and we'll come check it in about an hour. Probably takes an hour and a half or so to cook. It's gonna be good. Just make sure you don't have it on high. You want a low simmer. All right, this has been cooking a little bit over an hour. Check this out. Oh, it smells unbelievable. Take a look at that. Could use a little bit more stock. And you can see that the sweet potatoes have broken down really nicely here. Let me show you what I mean about this chicken. Look at that, it's just falling apart. It's exactly what we want. There's the thigh. Look at that, it's just falling right apart. Exactly what we want to see. Now that the chicken's all the way cooked, we can taste this for seasoning. We'll grab a little bit of this and try it. Ooh, looks hot though. Mm, the flavor is phenomenal. A little bit of um, a little bit of crunch from some of the chunks of peanut butter. That's really good. Add a little bit of salt here. We're gonna go ahead and scoop some of this up. Give that a try. Traditionally, you can serve this over rice, or if you really want to get fancy, you serve it on fufu. Now, maybe we'll get adventurous and we'll show how to make fufu, which is a dough-like material made out of cassava and plantains. So the best part of most of these cooking videos is the very end of it where I get to try it, and I'll let you know if it's good or it's not good. Uh, this is definitely an interesting recipe. It's authentic, authentic African food. Not something you get every day, and it's kind of fun to be able to cook it outside on the pit boss. Hmm. First of all, the texture is creamy and soft and the chicken flavor kind of goes throughout it. You can definitely taste the peanut butter. Um, it's a really interesting flavor. It's not overpowering. I thought a full cup of it was gonna be really overpowering. It's not. And the, the, I just can't get over the chicken the way it just falls apart. Look at that. Even the chicken, it gets coated with all of the seasonings, the stickiness of the peanut butter, and even the sweet potatoes. Man, what a delicious dish. Yeah, we're gonna have to make fufu in a future video. Fufu is almost this dough-like substance. You put it in the bottom of the bowl and you pour this over it. And traditionally, in Africa, 
just like in a lot of other places, people eat with their fingers. So you, you pinch off a little bit of the fufu, the dough, and you scoop it down with some of the, the stew, the soup. That's why it's nice and thick. You eat it that way. This is really good. I hope you guys give this recipe a try. I will put the full recipe down in the description below. Um, and again, this one is an uh, African-inspired peanut chicken stew. Absolutely delicious. Hope you guys enjoyed this Tuesday's grilling video, and we'll see you next Tuesday while we're cooking. Bye, y'all. Safe and happy grilling.